So you gotta be really patient for this kind of fishing and very methodical. Hey, he's just over 18 inches. Let's go fishing. People when you're in the mood, let's go fishing. Well, it's just me and you. Head on down to the fishing hole. Grab your hat, get your pole. Let's go fishing. When you're in the mood. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you by Rapala. Premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha. Conquer Outdoors. Defend Products. Eco-friendly protection from biting insects. Dickies. Quality workwear since 1922. You know, even under these low light conditions, I'm looking into the water, I can see that bright chartreuse crankbait and this nice large mouth that's hooked. You can see the weeds that are sticking out of his mouth. And I'm not gonna use the net for this guy. I'm just gonna grab him. That's one thing that bass associate with, especially largemouth, and that's vegetation. Did you know that a largemouth bass is part of the sunfish family? So of course, sunfish like shallow water and lots of weeds. And you can see this bright crankbait. It's one that's gonna become a real favorite, not just because of its action and diving depth, but also because of a couple of really good features. You can see this fish really sock this crankbait. Now that's not a monster, but you know what? He's a solid three pounds. That fish is probably about 16 and a half inches. You can see why they call him bucket mouse. So I'm gonna get him back in the water, nice and gently. So you can see the weeds that are growing here. These are actually very important weeds because they grow in deeper water. Some of these can be large strands. Some anglers call, call these cornfields because when they grow in water that's as deep as 10 or 12 feet, they'll come right up. Now the fish love to hang around these. This is the actual flower head up here because they provide a lot of cover and largemouth bass like cover, even in open water. The key to getting these largemouth to hit is to get your baits down deep. You can use soft plastics, but one of the best ways is to use a search crankbait that's gonna get those fish to strike. And what I'm holding up here is a very unique crankbait. This one is called the Arashi Flat 7. Now the reason they call it a Flat 7 is because it's designed to dive down to seven feet, but also look at the back. It's not a wide, that cylindrical shaped body. It's actually flat and it's got a little bit of shoulders. What makes this lure unique though is the eye. That's one of the features. So you can see where the split ring is connected to the eye. There is a mechanism. So the eye is not just molded right into the plastic lip. It actually moves. I can actually flex it back and forth. So you see if I shake it. That means that even if you get a large fish that's going to twist with the eye, it's not going to damage the eye or take the lure so that it's not tuned anymore and running true. So it's a self-tuning crankbait, which is very unique. The other unique feature is that the eye that's on the belly is not parallel to the body. Most eyes on a crankbait are parallel. It's actually perpendicular. And that ensures that the hook always lays in a certain position. And I believe it actually gives you a better hook set. So this lure will dive down to about seven feet. It has a very nice action from side to side. It rattles, which helps to attract fish. And this color, when it's overcast, is excellent because it's extremely visible. You always want to use like a fluorescent bright color when you have low light conditions in clear water or you're fishing turbid waters. Give it a try. I have a feeling you're going to catch fish with it. You know, when it comes to crankbait fishing, there's really two schools of thought by serious crankbait fishermen. One is that you should use a shorter, stiffer rod. The other group believe that you should be using a longer, softer rod, so there's a little bit of lag time when you go to set the hook on the fish. 
Right now I'm using an eight and a half foot spinning rod because we had some windy conditions. And uh, I'm casting a crankbait. And I find that the eight and a half foot rod works really well just off the weeds. If I was casting right into the weeds and on the edges, I would be using a shorter, stiffer rod. But there's a nice large mouth. You hit that um, crankbait broadside. It's actually hooked pretty well. I got my pliers handy, but I'm going to see if I can get the hooks out without it. Maybe not. Got to get the pliers out. Um, so the different size rods, there's a big difference whether there's a bit of slack in between when the fish hits and when you actually set the hook, just because the rod is longer. So the one thing that I would encourage you to do, if you're looking for outfits, especially for hard baits or crank baits, you might consider getting a longer rod to have as part of your arsenal, something around eight and a half feet long that has a little bit more of a flexible tip. That way you have the choice. You can use a stiffer rod where you gotta rip weeds or use a softer rod when you're fishing the outside weed edges and you'll catch nice bass like this one. Nice large mouth. You know, there's just something about finding large mouth in open water when they're feeding around weed beds. I mean, most anglers will target large mouth fishing the shorelines and fishing docks, trees that have fallen in the water, lily pads, and so on. You know, in professional bass tournaments, spinner baits catch a lot of fish, plastics do as well, but so do crank baits, even in very adverse conditions. See if this guy will just sit there for me. Just like that. Slide my hand underneath. Actually, I'm gonna lip them. Isn't that a nice large mouth? Look at that. Now that fish hit a lure that a lot of people use for walleye fishing. That's called a rapala tail dancer. And that particular one is a size seven. That means it's seven centimeters long. And it's the deep one, it has the longer lip. And that bright color actually has a UV finish. So it doesn't lose its color even in deeper water. He wasn't going to get off, that's for sure. There's one. There's two. Nice largemouth. Just going to release him in the water. He's going to take off. There he goes. Now, you know, this lure is very unique because it has this banana bill. And it has a very wide side-to-side -side wobble. But what I like, besides the wobble that goes from side to side, it also has a rolling action. Now, I'm not that coordinated that I can do both. But it does this and it does this at the same time. I call that flash. So when it rolls a little bit like this, it actually flashes its colors to the sides. This provides the erratic action. And I believe the action of a crankman is important because all fish have a lateral line. And that lateral line is actually an organ that picks up vibrations underwater. A lot of times before they spot the lure or the, the prey that they're going for, they actually sense it on their lateral line. So they zero in on it, they get up close to it. If it looks good, they grab it. So the action of a lure is extremely important. This is interesting, we're just fishing the edge of the weeds again. And I'm using, what are you? You're a nice bass, yes! That's on a dives to three foot model. See if I can land this guy, he's a decent sized fish. He's hooked just in the side of the mouth with one treble hook. See if I can swing him around. Ooh, he's not hooked very well. Oh, he's gonna jump, come on. This guy looks like he's a decent, 17 incher. Ah, nice large mouth. You know what? That is a good size fish. I happen to have a tape measure here. Take a quick measurement. Hey, he's just over 18 inches. You know, one of my favorite ways to get fish is using crankbaits. And you can see this. This is a good four, maybe four and a quarter pound largemouth. And he hit that dives to three. 
because I'm using a braided line, I'm using that suffix 832, it actually dives deeper than that, maybe around five or six feet. It's a gorgeous largemouth. He's gonna get him back in the water. He fought well. We want him to grow a little bit bigger so somebody else can catch him. There he goes. Now, what makes this lure unique? Number one, it's weighted. So it actually casts like a bullet. And I love that about it. So I'm using a spinning rod to cast. You could use a bait casting rod, but it casts really far in any direction, whether there's a wind or there's no wind. You can see that the size is ideal. It looks like a shad shape. The body has got that deep belly and it's got that shallow lip and the corners are cut away. It looks like a coffin and that gives it a really wide wobble. So when this lure is coming through the water, that wobble is about that wide and you can see your rod tip doing this when you retrieve it. So a lot of times I'll judge a crankbait by the side to side action. Because it's deep, it has a nice profile for those fish to see and then they nail it. This is a great crankbait to use around weeds and fishing off shallow rocky areas anywhere from about four to 10 feet deep. Because depending how far out you cast, the farther you cast, the more time that lure has to dive down. Give it a try. So there's something about uh, fishing heavy cover for largemouth. It just neat. You see this water is really crystal clear and really the bass don't have anywhere to ambush prey from. Early in the morning they can be cruising out in the open but when the sun comes out they've got to take cover. This guy's stuck on a thing. Nice little largemouth. You know a lot of people think that uh, a small fish won't hit a pretty big bait. This is about a one and a half pound largemouth. I'm guessing he's about 14 inches. He's not a bruiser by any means, but he was taking cover in these reeds that are falling over. And one way to get there is to use a compact plastic grub. So what I've got here, this is a goo bug, and you can see that it's uh, very compact. I'm just putting the hook back into it. I'm using about a quarter ounce bullet sinker and I've got about a four odd worm hook and it's pretty well weedless. You can see that the hook is sticking out but it's very tight to the actual trigger X. So it's weedless but as soon as a fish clamps down to it like that one, it grabs onto it. So the size of the weight is very important because you have to have enough of a sinker that you can penetrate this stuff. You can see it almost looks like wicket or rope that's down there. So this is really what bait casters were designed for, for this target type casting. So all I'm doing is just doing a gentle toss. It's not really a flip, it would be considered a pitch. And I'm letting that bug go down and then working it two, three times. Now I've waited to come in here until midday because I wanted bass that were swimming around the edges to actually duck into the cover. So this is called heavy cover fishing. And it's a good strategy to use if you wanna have some fun with bass to do it later on when the sun is up high like it is now. So it's about noon and all you're doing is staying out a little bit from the clumps or anywhere that a bass can hide under. So even though we're using an electric and the water's shallow, we're trying to use it minimally and we're just peppering every little pocket. So this is a little extension from the shore so it's a little bit shallower. But We have a lot of cattails that are growing in deeper water like three and four feet that I'm looking forward to fishing in just a little bit. So one of the best soft plastics to use when you're doing this is one that's not long. So you want to keep it short so it doesn't wrap itself around some of the limbs and some of the plants. And you also want to have a heavy enough weight so when it hits even some of the sparse weeds, it actually punches and goes down through. And you don't want any kind of a curly tail because those can actually get caught. So this particular grub that I'm using just has pretty well uh, flappers but they're flat. We don't have anything that can catch around the weeds. So you gotta be really patient for this kind of fishing and very methodical. I call it being like a vacuum cleaner because you wanna go into every little pocket. And even back when you fish that first layer, like I'm doing here, that's closer to open water, you can see I've got the electric on low speed. 
I get a little bit closer and then I go a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. Because some of the biggest bass, when you get into four or five pound largemouth and even bigger, will be right back there. But you don't want to go right in there because you can spook them. I love the head shakes. You can see it on the rod. And I'm using that camo line from Suffix, the 832. I'm gonna walk this one to the back, that braid. You feel everything, and I'm telling you, when you snap the hook, um, it goes into the fish. Let me just flip this guy up. I can do that, you know, because I'm using 20 pound test Suffix leader. And uh, I gotta watch how I'm gonna grab this fish. Because these, uh, Thugs have a very special hook that I'm going to show you in one sec. It's called a sure set hook. It sure sets the hook good. So anyway, because of the braid, there's no stretch. So when you jerk it, you really get the hook into the fish. Now, uh, I said that they have these sure set hooks. If you look here, I'm going to try putting it in my hand. That one hook is a little bit longer on both of those, and it's a wide bend. So if a fish is going to hit short, they're going to get it in their mouth. It's not a perfect size. Just uh, ideal for bass fishing, throwing around weeds and stuff. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you by MD Marine Insurance. Boat insurance made easy. It's tough to fish when you have to fish areas that uh, are controlled by where it's not too rough. We were going to fish some open weed beds for bass, but the winds blew up and they changed from the south. So we are kind of forced to fish a protected shoreline. And what I'm doing is just casting a crankbait right where the first weeds end. So it's a little shallower than I would fish for walleye or some of the other species of fish. And I'm throwing a crankbait that dives down to about seven feet. So it's a chunky little largemouth. That fish is probably about two pounds. Crankbaits are really good lures to use when you're fishing shorelines like that. If you know where the weeds are and you can actually work from the top of the weeds where it's shallow and then retrieve the crankbait back to the boat. So this is a Rapala dies to thug. You can see it's a nice bright yellow color. Uh, the unique thing about this lure is that it has a really curved lip. You can see that the lip hangs down which gives it a really wide action. And because it's bright Combined with that nice action, it's a really good lure to use under conditions just like this. So I'm just going to continue to cast through the shoreline. You can see that the shoreline is rocky. Nice fish. You know, I'm surprised that more people don't use crankbaits for largemouth bass. I think a lot of fishermen are just used to fishing shorelines and plastic, soft plastic, which were great. But uh, a lot of times these, uh, some of the good sized bass will move off the shorelines and they learn to feed on bait fish and pan fish. So I find crankbaiting such an easy way to fish. And because, you know, you, most crankbaits have one or two treble hooks, the fish are pretty, pretty well hooked. So this is a nice large mouth. He's probably approaching about three and a half pounds. And what I like is that he's got both hooks in his mouth. He wasn't going to go anywhere. You know, this is such an easy fishing. All I'm doing is casting. You know, there's really no cover along the shore other than just some sparse weeds. I'm keeping the boat in 10 feet of water. So this is good. Even if you don't have a sonar, you know, if uh, you use a jig and uh, you let the jig drop down and you, you have an idea of how deep the water is, and then uh, you cast towards shore, you can fish the same way. So there's a nice chunky largemouth. Like I say, that fish will probably be about three, three and a quarter pounds. He's a gorgeous fish. Mulligan, are you enjoying your day? Yeah, you're smelling the shoreline, eh? So the nice thing about the bait caster is that uh, it's effortless. See, I'm just using my wrist to cast, making a short cast. And one thing I gotta stress, the glasses, even with the overcast skies we've had, 
are so important because I can see, I can't see the weeds completely, but I can see where the dark patches are. So it really helps. It's kind of like a shadow in this overcast sky. And the bait caster, I, I just find it a lot of fun, fun to use. I mean, most people would love catching bass one after the other, like this. Nice little largemouth. I find too that a lot of times when you're fishing, especially down here on the Bay of Quinney, the bass will tend to school up even close to shore. So see, just making a short cast. It helps if you use a medium to medium heavy action bait caster so that you have a little bit of a spine to set the hook. Because when a, a fish hits a hard bait, like a crank bait, it knows right away that it's not real. So it'll try to let go of it. So see, I just make short cast to within about uh, 30 yards of shore. So I'm in 10 feet of water. And I'm actually letting that crankbait climb down the weeds to the 10 foot mark. Because the thug will dive to about 10 feet, especially with the braided line. So this is very easy fishing. And you'd be surprised sometimes when you have a featureless shoreline like here, there's really uh, you know, no, docks, no docks, no trees in the water or anything. And uh, you can get into a lot of fish. <clears throat> This is awesome. <laughs> you know, I think of those guys that uh, tournament fish that sometimes, and I've been there, struggle to get a few bass. It's really humbling. You know, and then you get days even like today, we've had a change in weather. So we had the winds shift. They were coming from the north, northwest, and they switched to a south wind. And that can really mess the fish around when you get changing conditions. But it's nice when you can come out here and just um, get a bunch of bass like this. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you by Suffix. Always use the best line. Yamaha. Conquer outdoors. Defend products. Eco-friendly protection from biting insects. Dickies. Quality workwear since 1922. You know, this is the RS, that stands for Rattling, Suspended, and Jointed Shad Wrap. And you can see some people call it a broken body. Even though it's bright out, because there's a lot of algae blooms here on the upper Bay of Quinney, because the water is actually quite shallow. The average depth is only about 10 feet, even though there's water that's about 20 feet deep. When you average it out, pretty shallow. And that means a lot of algae bloom because the water gets warm in the summertime. Because of that, there's low light penetration. So even though we got bright skies, using this fire tiger color that's very bright, you can see it's got chartreuse with the black and green back, works really well. Also those rattles, you can hear those rattles, they're pretty loud. And what I like about the jointed RS shad wrap is that not just the rattles, but also the body going around really makes a lot of noise and vibration. 